Tanya is an intuitive. She's a modern day yogini and teacher. She's a racial healer, a life lover. She's a mother, an earth protector, and a truth speaker. So with that, I will pass over to you, Tanya. Thank you so much. That really, yeah, you're speaking my language and you touched <laughs> my heart. And so uh, thank you. Thank you for welcoming me to this space. And it seems like the perfect kind of space to come into at the end on Friday when you've been, you know, bringing so much in this space over the week. And, you know, just to pause on that for a moment. And there will be just little pause spaces that I'll be bringing in this, this current hour of just feeling into that and everything that you've created and how needed it is in the world and just recognizing that you know just to just to sit with that and the importance of this work that each and every one of you in this space each and every one of you that isn't in this space at this time but is listening later of, of the work that you're doing and as you said there the importance of rest the importance of of having the quiet space for the the maybe noisier spaces to take take part so we keep life in balance and as you said there I, i'm tanya i'm a yogini which is a female yoga practitioner i'm a student of yoga i'm a teacher of yoga and have been for nearly 20 years now and i have a, a deep love and I've also had a, a strong dislike of yoga at times as well. So it's been a real you know, light and shadow journey for me. And, and I really feel it is in the light at the moment in that I've really fine tuned how I bring my yoga to the world to share with others and how I practice yoga. Um, so I'm going to take us on a little journey today where I'll share a little bit. I, I really feel called to create this as a space of few, fewer words, because you've had so many words this week, and a space to drop into, into stillness and into quiet, and to land and to be. And for me, Yoga Nidra is, is a practice that is so challenging to describe in words, because it, it doesn't really transcribe in a book, in words, it's a felt practice. And so I would love to share from the space of you actually experiencing it rather than me trying to give lots of theories and words and it does this and it does that and here are the benefits. It's like, rather than that, how would it be to share this space together and actually to experience the wonders and the magic of this practice? Before, before we do that, I'd like to share a little bit about my journey and also give gratitude to my teachers. So my journey started off as a very dynamic, lycra clad, yoga, class going, you know, mat on my back, showing up, pulling all sorts of crazy shapes, balancing on my head, seeing if I could touch my toes a hundred times and, and over time, what happened for me personally was I injured myself again and again and again because I seem to have this journey of life of learning lessons the hard way. I, I, I learn through suffering quite often, as, as often we all do. You know, some don't, but the majority of people I speak to, our deepest learnings are, are from the place of suffering and that's certainly very true for me. So I injured myself to the point that I was bedridden for nearly a year and and this was a real invitation it didn't feel like an invitation at the time but an invitation from life to take a good look around my life my way of being in the world which was pushing you know busying always on the go to to really evaluating what my body could do going forward and what my life could look like going forward. And in this space where I was literally, I'd like to say that, you know, I naturally decided to press pause, I didn't. Life paused me. I started to process my own inner traumas and generations of trauma and, and really start to open the Pandora's box. And the, my Pandora's box is still continuing to open. I'm still continuing to work and really 
for me, these last two years have been a real deep dive into processing, you know, what's felt like bucket loads of trauma. And, and I heard someone yesterday on one of the calls yesterday was to say, you know, this feeling of bursting into laughter in, in one moment and bursting into tears the next. And I found myself really nodding. I was like, yeah, that really feels like life right now in many ways that there's this just this elevated joy and this deep sense of grief that sometimes I can't even put into words again to the wordless state. And so during that time um, of re-evaluation, Yoga Nidra did find me and I found Yoga Nidra and, and it's just been the most beautiful, unpicking, unravelling, awakening um, for me as a practice and, and an ongoing learning, an ongoing learning to notice my own intrinsic patterns that's, that still are there of wanting to push, of wanting to be all things to all people, of exploring boundaries exploring my relationship to rest and and i'd love to invite this as an open inquiry now of what what is your relationship to rest how do you meet rest is it you know like i did <laughs> drag to rest is it do you meet rest from a place of exhaustion where your body's like actually i have no choice is it a practice that you have is it something that's sporadic? And, and maybe you could type in the chat box or if you feel called to, 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 take, um, to take yourself off mute and just share, you, you know, what, what is your relationship to rest? And, and maybe even what were you shown as rest? We know what we've been shown in society. Maybe what did your parents model to you as, as rest? For me, I was brought up by a single mother who was working three jobs. Rest wasn't in the equation. What was it like for you? So if you feel called to, pop yourself off mute or maybe share a few words. If I can speak. <laughs> um, what you're saying really is resonating with me um, and in terms of my perception of rest as a child or as a teenager. Uh, rest was only your time in bed <laughs> and even the bedtime was um, preceded by working my parents worked 14 15 16 hours a day and so I felt it was my duty to support them and do for them as much as I could so I was either doing schoolwork or working in their business or looking after the younger siblings um, so that kind of continued and the sense of responsibility for others um, that theme continued at university and in my social activism and in my work roles as well so um, um, what you're saying is really resonating with me and I really like the questions that you're putting forward you. uh, because you're articulating things that I only started to realized during the pandemic kind of the enforced um stopping <laughs> so i didn't um i stopped going to see my mother and doing her gardening and her cleaning and the various siblings and then their children and their needs and i was able to stay home <laughs> and rest <laughs> so um yes thank you for speaking uh, in, a, in a way that's really evoking so much to me. Yeah, thank you for sharing in a way that's evoking so much for me as well. Mm -hmm. And and the pandemic, the pandemic, yeah, really, you know, for, for many people, this sudden space that was all, you know, wasn't a choice to suddenly be, you know, have so many things that we're going out doing to drop, to come to that space of rest possibly or to fill with other doings and, and there can be a real discomfort in rest given what we've seen given what you've shared given what we see in our society and it's like how do we meet these these spaces of discomfort 
I'm just going to read here. Rest from Roxanne. Thank you. Is it Asa? 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 Asa, yes. Asa. Thank you, Asa. Thank you. Roxanne shares rest for my mum was sending the kids out to play so she could take a nap at the week on the weekend. Maybe. Yeah. So naps. And there was a reference yesterday to the nap ministry, which I highly recommend checking out. There's some fantastic nap practices out there. And but I'd also like to kind of reframe the nap as well to to this being a practice of and, and, and even reframing even self care of of boundaries, natural boundaries for life and for being able to show up to life. And so this this practice of yoga nidra yoga is to create union. And to me, it's union with ourselves, but also union with life for we are all of life, we are life. And the union that this practice offers for me and for many is is the noticing of how we are in life, how do we show up to this life and the poet Mary Oliver says, you know, what's what do you want to do with your one world and precious life. Mm. And it's, you know, for me, it's, I want to be with it. So this union that, that we are offered through this practice of yoga can be union with the breath, with the body, with the essence of our being, but also with the cycles of life. Here we are in autumn. How do we meet the, the season of autumn? How do we meet winter? How do we press pause when the world around us is pausing? Like nature knows. So a lot of my practices are really rooted and grounded in nature. Nature, And I think of the, the roots of the tree delving deep into the earth and through this practice, we do the same. And nidra is, is the sleep. In Sanskrit, it translates to English as as sleep but it isn't sleep in the sleep that we've been sold <laughs> eight hours i mean where did that even come from eight hours of sleep and it's like yo i've had eight hours of sleep whether it's enough or not enough you know for some it might be 10 12 hours for some it might be half the day of the waking day a lot of a lot of yogis and yoginis will awaken in the middle of the night and use that as time and space for practice. It's to notice what's the what's our relationship to sleep. And so, you know, maybe we could even reframe what sleep is. So sleep in in this practice is that the body becomes asleep, maybe, and in some teachings. There are very strict instructions if we look at Satyananda, which is one of the principal teachers of Yoga Nidra. You do not move. Once you lie down, you do not move. You do as you're told. And I say no. If I choose to move, I choose to move. If you choose to move, you choose to move. Why? Because we have autonomy over ourselves. And so now we're looking at the, the harms that have been caused in yoga, as well as the goodness with that particular school of thought of not being able to shift or move. And this practice is done lying down. There's no stretching, moving, shifting, unless it feels right. And so then we reframe the yoga that we often see out there in the, this capitalist society of skinny white women in lycra bending into pretzel like shapes. And we inquire, it's like, what is it to practice? Well, the inquiry is the practice. And then there can be an invitation where it's like, actually just to be here and to share space is a practice of yoga in itself. So throughout this rest, which we'll come to in a moment, you have full autonomy of yourself to do and to move and to shift and to adjust as you feel you want to. 
You might want to lie down, you might want to sit up, you might want to gather blankets. And I'll share more about the practice as we come to the practice. So I give gratitude to Satyananda for the teachings because sometimes there's teachings in what I don't want to share on and sometimes there's teachings with what I do want to share on and also to acknowledge both. We have the Himalayan Institute as well, the practices, and there are many different ways of meeting this practice. Richard Miller's practice is I Rest Yoga, which is based around the mind and um, is for PTSD. His practices were to help and support veterans, people in prisons, so very much around the kind of psychological and physiological Nidra practice. I would like to give thanks as well to Rod Stryker for his practice and to my dear teachers of Uma Dinsmore Tully and Nalipta Tully who offer a practice called Total Yoga Nidra which is to include all of the beautiful teachings rooted with earth-based practice, connection to nature and to body autonomy. And if you haven't, haven't come across Uma Dinsmore Tully, I highly, highly recommend you checking her out. Jackie says, during the workday, rest becomes forced and professionalised. It puts blocks on my calendar and sets reminders to rest and take naps. It felt necessary and forced at the same time. Yeah. So the blocking in the calendar that's necessary and forced. And, and I, I personally feel, and from the stories I hear around taking our time to rest, where we are in at this stage of societal shifts, there has to be this real stake in the ground of this is my time, this is my boundary. And to block it out, I have an alarm that goes off 20 minutes before, 10 minutes before, five minutes before rest and on the dot of rest. And if I hear my mind, oh, I just do this then, it goes off again. Oh, okay, I'm catching it. And so we catch and we catch. And even the most practiced resties are still working with this because it's the soup that we swim in. It's the messages we've been taught quite often. So I would like to invite us to come to rest and just to experience, and there is absolutely no way to get this wrong. And, and I really want to emphasize that it's, it's, Let's be curious. I think of my work as like the curiosity clinic to just give it a go, see how it feels, take what you want from my words, leave, dispose of anything that doesn't resonate and, and to get yourselves really as comfortable as you can. So you might like to lie down in this practice. This practice is generally taught lying down or shuffle into a seat. Is there any way of getting it so it doesn't beep if people come into the room that we could? So it's, I don't know how it's not it. beeping for everyone. It's beeping for you because you're a co-host. I'll take that off for you. Yeah, if that would be good. You don't need it. There you go. I'll leave it for me so I can let people in. Thank you. Thank you. So the invitation now is to get as comfy as you can and you can have videos on videos off whatever feels right for you is to is to lie down if that feels right is to come to a seat that feels comfortable for you this is your time this is your time to to rest whatever it looks like whatever it feels like The best way for me to share this practice with you, and for some of you, it might be that you're very familiar with the practice of Yoga Nidra. Some of you might be completely new to this. 
wherever you are, I invite you to come into this practice with a beginner's mind. For this is the only time in this actual moment in life that we've shared this space together, that we've practiced together. And Yoga Nidra, as I see it, is a journey, is a journey through the body, a journey through the mind. I will guide you through different parts of your body. And as I do so, those parts may or may not come to rest. It may be that you just notice. There may be areas that feel tight or tense and Everything is welcome, absolutely everything is welcome. So as you lie or sit there, see if you can notice how well rested you feel as you lie down. If you were to give yourself a scale of one to 10, 10 being actually as I lie here, I feel really well rested. This is another practice to, to take a rest, to take some time out. And if you're lying down, it may be that you want to lie on your back. Anyone familiar with yogi, yogi and yoga will know of Savasana lying on the back. It's known as the pose of the corpse where the body comes to rest legs and arms out to the sides, or perhaps you'd like to lie on your side. You might want to gently adjust between the two. You might want to curl up. You might even want to lie on your front or stay seated. What feels right for you and knowing that you can adjust, that you have autonomy over yourself. And that this is your practice and it might be that you'd like to soften or close your eyes or place something over your eyes. A scarf, a piece of fabric. Or just take the gaze down. Knowing that this practice comes from many years past generation upon generation upon generation. The Rishis and the Rishikas, the original seers. This practice written in epic Indian poetry, shared, transformed, taken into different places from Zoom calls like this, where we gather in space, to communities all over the world. So we begin this practice with an observation on the breath, of your breath, just to simply notice not to force or change and really knowing that there's nothing wrong with anything that you're doing. In this curious space of noticing where in your body you feel your breath most strongly, where your breath travels, the cool air coming in, the warm air going out. And as you notice your breath, you'll come to hear the sound of a chime as we come into this practice. And this sound of the chime will call us out of the practice. It's a gentle entry in and a 
gentle exit out. So as you notice the rise and the fall of the breath, its comings and goings, how would it be, I wonder, to welcome your breath as if you would a dear, dear friend? To welcome the breath. To welcome the breath and also welcome your mind. Any thoughts that are taking you here, there and anywhere else. To let your mind do as the mind does. As you draw your attention to the breath. And to your body. And to notice where your body meets the surface. The surface upon which you sit or lie. The surface, be surface beneath you, the earth, and just like the roots of a tree draw down to the earth, invite your attention to draw down to the earth. And as your attention draws down to the earth, let your bones become just a little bit heavier. A little more solid against its surface. And settle in and settle down. And knowing that all of you is welcome here. Every tear, every cough, burp, fart, everything. Every drop of blood, if that's relevant for you. Every sigh, every yawn, everything is welcome in this space. How does it feel to be completely welcome, just as you are? And just as you are, resting, noticing the rise and the fall of the breath. And as you settle in and notice the breath, its rise and its fall, notice the air that you breathe, the space around you. And as you notice the space around you, the breath within you, Draw your awareness now to the space in the centre of your chest, to the space of your heart. Your physical heart, your emotional heart, and if it resonates, your spiritual, spiritual heart space. Let your attention rest here. And in this space, we plant a seed of intention. What is it that your heart most longs for in this moment? What will draw you closer to rest? And it was as if you were to plant a little seed, a little seed of intention in the center of your heart. This in Yoga Nidra is known as the Sankalpa, the longing, the desire of the heart. It may come as a word or words, a felt sense, a knowing in your bones. It may not come at all and that's okay. It may come later in the day, over the weekend, this time next year. 
Simply plant a seed of intention in the space of your heart. And then drawing your awareness to your body, to the crown of your head, to the soles of your feet, and awareness of the length of your body. Awareness of the edges of your body, where your body meets the surface, your clothes, blankets perhaps. And then drawing your awareness now down to the space between your eyebrows. Down to the space in the throat. Let your attention draw now over to your right shoulder. Attention travelling like a journey around your body. Maybe as you notice your body comes to rest or maybe there's just a simple observation of right shoulder right elbow, right wrist, right thumb, first finger, second finger, third and fourth, to the palm of the right hand, to the back of the right hand, Inviting your awareness now to come up to the right elbow, to the right shoulder, and back to the centre of your chest, back to the centre space that is your heart. And then inviting your awareness to draw over to the left shoulder, to the left elbow left wrist, left thumb, first finger, second finger, third and fourth, left palm of the hand and the back of the left hand, wrist, left elbow, all the way back up to the left shoulder and back to the centre space of your heart. From your heart space, draw your awareness now down to the navel space, to the top of the pubic bone, and now across to the right hip, to the right knee, right ankle, to the big toe, second, third, fourth, and the little toe there. To the sole now of the right foot, right ankle, right knee, all the way back up to the right thigh, to the pubic bone, to the left hip, left knee, left ankle, to the big toe on the left there, second, third, fourth and fifth, to the sole of the left foot, to the ankle, to the knee, to the hip, to the pubic bone, all the way back up now to the navel and back to the space of your heart. And as you notice the space of your heart, inviting in now a few deep cleansing breaths, expansive breaths. 
the cool air coming in and the warm air going out. And get curious. How is it to notice the breath? How is it to have this rest? Are there any areas of your body where you want to send your breath? Areas that feel tight or tense? Any areas of your body that you really want to send love and healing to? And how would it be to get a little more curious? How would it be to now send your breath out to the edges of your body? And then to soften the edges of your body to join the rest of life around you. In this space, this liminal space that is Yoga Nidra. often known as the space between two worlds. The space that is timeless. Where time simply does not matter at all. And how would it be to now Draw your attention into your body to feel the boundaries and the edges that are you, the weightiness of your bones, sensations on your skin, and then expand your attention back outwards like a light radiating out to the boundless being that you are. To the boundless being that you are. And then draw your attention back inwards. And as your attention come back, comes back inwards, draw it back to the space in the center of your chest and back to your heart to your heart's longing, maybe your intention, or a simple awakening of inviting in the possibility of an intention coming through when the time is right. And starting to draw some gentle awareness from the heart to the crown of your head. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The back of your body. To the sides of your body and to the front of your body, to the sky above you, to the earth beneath you, to the room that you're in, to the world that you're in. To all that you bring to the world, your magic, your message, and knowing that your message is so much clearer when you're well rested. Feeling the spaciousness of this moment. To tune into the rhythm of your breath as you start to deepen and awaken your breath now.
to the season of now here in the UK of autumn and whatever season you're in how might you honour that season how can you honour yourself today as you travel through the rest of Friday So slowly, very slowly, I invite you to start to bring a gentle awakening to your body. And we emerge at the same pace we took entrance. A gentle wiggle of the fingers and the toes perhaps. A yawn, maybe. A stretch of your body. This practice of Yoga Nidra is complete. And the invitation now is to really take your time. To come back slowly. And to notice any information that your body's giving you here. If you feel very tired, could there be an intention to really bring in some more rest this weekend? And that might well mean cancelling a plan if it feels that that's right for you. So we create these boundaries of self wellness. Of perhaps an early night, a lie in, a gentle walk in nature. What is it that your body needs over the coming days? Is this a practice you might like to include in your life? I often like to practice before I even get out of bed in the morning to start the day with this practice. And then drop in again in the afternoon when often our bodies get what might be known as an afternoon slump when actually it's our bodies just calling for a pause. So I'd love to invite and welcome you back to this space if you so wish. <laughs> 